Hi students, so now I'm going to show you how we can use an op amp to take the average of some input voltages. So um, the averaging amplifier is actually a summing amplifier where the gain is going to be 1 over the number of voltage sources that we are summing. So um, I'm going to show you an example of an inverting averaging amplifier and we'll just do it with um, two input sources. So suppose we have a V1 and a V2. We have resistors R1 and R2 and then these two are going to, the current that comes out of these is going to combine. This is I1, I2. It combines at this node here and I'll call this I and then um, we're also going to have a feedback loop. So most of the op-amp circuits will have a negative feedback loop. So the resistor that's in the feedback loop, I'll label that R, RF. So this current I is going to come into this node. Some of it will come into the op-amp, so I'll label this IA because this is my A input and this is my B input. Some of it's going to take the path that goes up and around this feedback loop, so I'll call that I sub F. And then um, my B input here, I'm actually going to connect this directly to ground. So if I connect the other side of these voltage sources to ground, and also over here on the other side, I have my V out is measured between these two terminals here. And I'll put the little ground symbol there so you know that this, down, this line down here is zero volts. So um, if we were to do circuit analysis on this, Suppose we, we want to design an averaging amplifier where um, we want to take the average of both of these input sources. So since we only have two, that means that our V out, since it's inverting, will be negative 1 over 2 times V1 plus V2. So um, our circuit here is going to implement this where since I have two voltage sources, my gain I want to be 1 over 2. So if you had 3, this would be 1 over 3. If you had 4, it would be 1 over 4. So that's why it's called an averaging amplifier. Um, it's just a summing amplifier where the gain is 1 over the number of input voltage sources you have. So suppose, for example, this is what we want to design. We're going to do circuit analysis on this circuit, just like we did in, um, with the other circuits. So if I start here, if I label this node VA, then doing nodal analysis at node VA, my KCL equation is um, the sum of the currents coming into the node. So what do I have here? I've got this I1 current, the I2 current, meeting here at this node and combining into I. So let me write that down. I have I1 plus I2 is equal to I. And then at this VA node, I have IA coming in. I have IA coming out and IF coming out. So I have I is equal to IA plus IF. But since I'm using the ideal op amp approximation, um, by the ideal op amp, um, op amp approximations, I have that IA is so negligible that I may consider it to be zero. So if IA is zero, that goes away. So if I combine these two equations, that gives me I1 plus I2 is equal to IF. So all the current that combines here is going to come up and take the path of the feedback loop. So now the next step in my node voltage analysis is I'm going to replace these current with an equation in terms of V and R using Ohm's law. So to replace my I1, I'm going to take V1 minus VA over the resistor between. So this is going to be V1 minus VA divided by R1. I'm going to replace I2 with V2 minus VA over the resistor between, which is R2. So this is V2 minus VA over R2. And then my IF, I can replace this with VA minus V out over the resistor between, which is RF. VA minus V out over RF. So now I get to use the fact that this um, B input here to my op amp, this non-inverting input, is connected directly to ground. So that means that VB is equal to zero, right? The voltage 
at this node here is zero since this um, is connected by a wire directly to the ground node. And because of the ideal op-amp approximation, I have that VA is equal to VB, which implies that VA is equal to zero. So I know this because of the op ideal op-amp approximation. That's also why I get to say this. Okay, great. So that means in my equation here, everywhere I have a VA, I can just replace that with zero. So my equation becomes V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2 is equal to negative V out over RF. So now what I want to do is I want to um, reorganize this equation so I have V out in terms of my V ins here. So let me get V out by itself. I get V out is equal to negative RF times the quantity V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. Um, so if I distributed this out, this would be negative RF over R1 times V1 minus RF over R2 times V2, and this is my V out. Now this V out here, um, we want to kind of match our coefficients with this V out. So if I multiply this out, this would be negative one-half V1 plus um, negative one-half V2, right? So the coefficients here, this one over two, the coefficient in front of this V1, well, that's this thing here. So we want, we want RF over R1 to equal one over two. So that means we can pick, we can let RF be one K ohm resistor and we can let R1 be a two K ohm resistor and that will meet our constraints. So we, at the same time, we simultaneously have to meet this constraint, where this coefficient in front of the V2 is also a half. So that means that, well, we've already picked RF, so in order for R2 to meet the constraint, I can also let this be 2K ohms. So if I have this orientation for my circuit with these resistors, placed as input resistors and the feedback resistor, then this will act as an averaging um, amplifier with an inverting op amp. So let me know if you have questions about the averaging amplifier, and um, I'll show you an exa another example in the next video.